Let's adjust this. I feel like these lights always glare, but then if I don't have them positioned just right, it also looks like it's super dark in here. So let me just try to adjust that. That's a little bit better. Well, that one's probably just going to have to glare. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to wait because I know there's a bit of a lag. And while we wait, I'm going to turn my camera just a hair because it was a bit off. And that would bug me. It still looks off. Well, we'll just go with. Oh, goodness. I have a new phone stand. Because when I go live now, I go live on my phone instead of using my iPad because my iPad is what I usually film on but I couldn't get the autofocus to turn off and so it would kind of zoom in and zoom out so now I use my phone and I have a fancy new phone stand but I'm not very good at setting things up so hopefully tomorrow my wonderful husband will get that set up for me and then I won't have these kinds of struggles anymore I'm bringing up this video just as I always do on my laptop so if you have any questions relating to this project or to pretty much anything ThermoWeb. Oh goodness, my phone just jumped. Well, there we go. <laughs> it looks like it finally focused and finally did what I wanted it to do. Hooray, great. So anyway, as I was saying, if you have any questions about anything ThermoWeb or anything about this project, feel free to ask me and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Today we are making a really fun project that my son and I actually worked on together and it's this cute little memory card game. So let me kind of pick these things up and I'm going to show you how it's done. Let's clear this stuff away over here. So it's just your basic memory card game. So we created two of each of these designs and we did this together. One day after school, um, I gave my son the two Laura Kelly stamp sets, me and my peeps, and this one is Kindness on Purpose. Kindness on Purpose is my favorite. Me and my peeps is his favorite because he loves that the family, you can build any family you want. And he said that, let me find this one is my husband, his dad. This one was me, but for some reason today he colored this one as me. And then this one is him. And he loves that these little people look like us. So I gave him both those stamp sets. He picked which images he wanted to do. He stamped them and then he colored them. And then together we did some foiling. He loves to foil. He calls foils tinsels. Um, so since the laminator's hot, I helped him with it a little bit, but he did some foiling and then I did some die cutting and some gluing and we have this fun little memory card game. So it works just like, you know, a regular memory. Let's see if I can, you would kind of like put these face down and then he, he loves this game. He's always loved this game ever since he was a kid and you just kind of find your matches one at a time. It's such a fun little game, I think anyway. So we have a whole bunch of cute little ones today. I'll kind of show you all of them. This one here, I we use all Laura Kelly products on here. So this is the Sweet Swirls toner sheet and he, we picked the Red Wagon. He picked out the colors and I did the ink blending for him. He loves ink blending but he said his hands were tired from coloring. So I did the ink blending for him. This one here is the uh, sprinkled stripes toner sheet. And then we use the carrot orange foil on that one. Here's baby Swiss. This is one of my favorite toner sheets. And that one has the parakeet green foil. This one here is the dauntless diamonds. And this one is denim jeans blue. And then we went spotty dots for this one. And this is the berry purple. And then this one, we don't have a dog, but he said we have five cats. And he said that was too much to color. So he just wanted to put the cat and the dog on there. And he even colored the dog kind of a pinky purple. 
But this one is the Wacky Waves with Flamingo Pink. And then he did this one. He colored it like my grandparents' house. They have a red tin roof on their house. And so he colored this one like their house. And this is the Chunky Checks toner sheet. And he used Magic Wand Silver foil on there. So we, there's a whole bunch of matches here. We're going to add on to that today because he has picked out and colored some more images. He picked out which ones he wanted me to do for the samples and then which ones he wanted me to create live on the video. He's in school today, but he wanted to do the cupcakes because he knows I love cupcakes. And he currently is obsessed with rainbows. When we are in the car, he has this lap desk and I bought him a whole bunch of dry erase markers the lap desk has a dry erase surface on it, and so he's always asking me as we're driving what the colors of the rainbow are, and he draws rainbows. And so I think he did such a great job coloring these cute little Laura Kelly images. So he picked cupcakes because they're my favorite, and rainbows are his favorite. So those are the ones we're going to make today. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to kind of put all of these to the side, and we'll get started in on today's project. So for the memory card game, you need to have some kind of something. And I thought you could just cut a basic rectangle, but why not have something fun? So I used, let's see if I can find it. I have this little tag set from Pink and Main, but anything you have just a stitched rectangle would work if you want to have something a little bit fancy, but you need two pieces because we wanted to kind of go with a rainbow theme here. So and it makes it easier to match. It makes it easier for him to see. He's only five, so he loves this memory card game, but I didn't want to make it too, too involved. So, you know, it, red matches with the red one. So the backs though have to be the same color and we could have picked any color we wanted, but we went with white. So for each little memory tag, I need a piece of white and you need to make two of each. So for each color, you need two whites and then a color of paper so that when you flip it over, you can not cheat. You, you know, you're not matching the yellow with the yellow. So he picked the yellow today and also a rainbow background. Yellow is my favorite color. And like I said, he is loving rainbows right now. So rainbow is his favorite color, yellow is mine. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's start with some foiling. We picked out a couple of our favorite toner sheets. I love the Wacky Waves and he loved the Sweet Swirls. And then we also picked out some colors of foil. So the Laura Kelly foil, we used seven out of eight of them on the examples but we left sunshine yellow and that's going to go with my favorite, the, um, the sweet swirls. I think I mixed them up. Sweet swirls is my favorite. He likes the stripes. So the, um, sunshine yellow is going to go with the sweet swirls. And then he wanted a rainbow foil. So we dug into my stash and we found the deco foil rainbow shattered glass. He loves this one. He calls it rainbow tinsel absolutely loves it so this is the one that we're going to be using today and i'm just going to figure out i think we're going to go this way with the foil when i do foiling i like to use the deco foil parchment paper as my carrier sheet i don't know what it is about this but since i switched to this i have had great results with foiling and what i like to do is take one of those sheets and i cut it down to size so this is six and a half by six and a half. This is pretty much my standard, but if I am making a slimline card, when I cut this, I have just enough left over that I have a perfectly sized parchment paper to foil something slimline sized. I find that I am quite accident prone in my craft room. And so if I can reduce the number of oopsies, I will. And cutting down the parchment paper reduces the chance of my laminator eating my project. So that's why I like to cut mine down. When I'm foiling, I like to start by taking a, this is a clean microfiber cloth. I always say it looks dirty because it's what I clean my stamps with and then I throw it through my washer and dryer. It's clean, 
And I'm just going to kind of buff away anything that may be on this toner sheet. Sometimes during the manufacturing process, there may be something on there. There may be dust. I have cats, so we may have cat hair. We may have, well, human hair probably isn't an option in my house. We all have buzzed heads, including me, so probably not any hair. But anything that's on your toner sheet is going to, um, I can't think of the right word. It's going to interact with your foiling. So you want to make sure you have a clean surface. Foil always goes onto your medium pretty side up. So whether this is duo gel, blanco gel, a toner sheet, foil goes pretty side up. And I like to flip this over to the back and make sure that that's lined up. And then I'm going to smooth that out. I'll pop this into my parchment paper carrier sheet. It fits in there just perfectly. And again, I'm going to smooth that out because any wrinkles or anything are going to um, mess up your foiling. I'll run this through my laminator. I have the Royal Sovereign laminator. That seems to be the kind of the crafty standard. So that's what I have. It has been heating up since 10 minutes before my live. So it has been on for about 20 minutes. It's nice and hot and it's good to go. So I like to make sure my laminator is nice and hot and ready to go. And then also, um, th one of the biggest tips I can give with foiling is to know your laminator. My laminator, when I got it brand new out of the box, it doesn't like to foil if I run something through the center, but it does like to foil if I run my panels through the sides of the laminator. So I'll pick either the left side or the right side. I feel like maybe there's extra pressure there. I'm not sure. It could just be that you know, my laminator is picky. It's just like my die cutting machine. My die cutting machine doesn't like to cut if I have things on the edge of my cutting plate. It likes it towards the middle or like towards the, the first side that I put into my die cutting machine. If I put it towards the outside, it doesn't like to cut. So, you know, everything is electronic and picky. I'm going to go ahead and start prepping this panel. This is the Wacky Waves. And he likes this one because it's a chunky pattern. He likes the chunky patterns because it shows more of the foil designs. I'm going to trim off a little bit of this foil because there's a bit extra on there and I don't want to waste anything. And I'll save that little piece for a future project. This first one is all done. I'm going to use that same piece of parchment paper. I will reuse that parchment paper until it crinkles up. So it's still quite smooth. The more you use something, the more wear and tear goes into it. But I find that this parchment paper lasts a really long time. This is the same one that I've been using for a couple weeks now. If you joined me, I think did I do foiling in my last live? I believe that I did. And it's still the same parchment paper from then. All right, so this seems to be nice and cool. I'm gonna peel this back slowly. I don't like to just kind of rip and tear. I find that going slowly and making sure that it's cool is going to give you improved foiling results. So let's see if I can get this up close. It's so pretty. This one is the Sweet Swirls with the Laura Kelly Sunshine Yellow. It's that perfect kind of like a goldenrod yellow. It's so pretty. And don't throw away this piece because look at how perfect that piece is too. And you can use this as a negative piece just by using um, like an easy cut adhesive sheet and gluing this right onto your cardstock. Or you can use um, deco foil toner sheets and just foil that design. And then you're gonna have the negative effect of that toner sheet and it's so pretty. I love this. I think that's so pretty. I'm glad that we saved my favorite color, the yellow for the live because I think it's really, really pretty. All right, so this other one is coming through. I know that's always the hardest part of laminating or foiling is the waiting, but it's coming, I promise. And then once that comes out, I'm gonna do a bit of die cutting and ink blending so that these game pieces match the others. So this is my die set that I use, the Fancy Tags die set from Pink and Main, but again, use 
you know, whatever you have in your craft room and in your stash. And I'm going to die cut this and then we'll do some ink blending too. Alrighty, here is the other one. I'm going to make sure this is cool before I remove my foil. I don't want to just kind of grab and yank. So we're going to cool that down. And I'll grab an edge. And then I like to think about how you peel back tape when you're doing some masking. I like to peel it back onto itself. And it is perfect. I love it. He loves rainbows, so I hope he loves this too because this is so pretty. And again, don't throw this piece away. Oftentimes he takes my negative pieces because that's he likes them. So I always set them aside, but then he ends up going through my basket and stealing them. I'm gonna turn off my laminator. And now we'll do some die cutting and some ink blending. I'm gonna grab, I probably don't, I'm gonna cut this down because I don't need this whole piece. And I will keep, I have like a little storage pocket that I keep extra pieces of foil and extra pieces of my toner sheets in. And then when I need a quick card, I can just grab them and throw a card together real quick. Gotta grab my die cutting machine. And then remember for each game piece, because it's a, a memory matching game, we need to cut two. So I already cut the white backer pieces as well as the pattern paper or colored cardstock pieces. But we will need two of these pieces of the toner sheet pieces. Alrighty, that one's done. Now I have to decide, because my tag is smaller than the foiled design, I don't know which colors he's going to want me to show on here. So I might end up going, hmm, I know, I mean, for those of you who have kids, whichever way I go will be the wrong way. I think I'm going to go this way, and then maybe, maybe we'll just blend some yellow up across the top, or bottom rather. We'll go this way. I love how quickly this comes together because we're just creating two pieces. I've already done, I think seven, because I wanted to use every single one of the Laura Kelly uh, toner sheets. So I've already done seven game pieces, so 14 total. And then we'll do another two today and it'll be a complete game set. And we can always add on as he gets older, adding on and maybe doing some more of the same color, but switching up the images, like maybe having, you know, have little froggies on the red, have the frog also go on an orange piece or something, and you have to match that. That's a good idea. Oh, no. Well, my dye is on the floor. <laughs> I'll get that later. All right, so here are my pieces. Those are the toner sheets that we just foiled. And then I also need some pattern paper or colored cardstock, and then the backers for each of the game pieces as well. I'm going to use my iCraft Ultra Bond liquid adhesive because I love this adhesive and I find that it gives me some time to wiggle things around. But another go-to of mine is the ThermalWeb XL Tape Runner. I love how strong this tape runner is. I'm going to go ahead and just adhere these game pieces together. So I want to have make sure that the white is on the back. And then we did color coordinating like game fronts, I guess you could say. Oh, I've got to do my ink blending. How could I forget? Well, we'll glue these together. The liquid adhesive gives me just that 
couple seconds to scoot things around and make sure that they are matched up, which is great because I'm not good at lining things up just perfectly. I definitely need that time to scoot things around. Okay, let's do some ink blending because you can do a lot with toner sheets. Ink blending is probably one of my favorites, but you've seen me, if you've watched the lives before, you've seen me do some water coloring and you can do Copic coloring too. So keeping with the yellow theme for the sunshine yellow foil on the Sweet Swirls toner sheet, I'm just gonna come in, I'm using Distress Oxide ink today, but you can use, again, use whatever inks you have. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just coming right up from the bottom and just adding a little bit of dimension and just kind of making these color coordinate a little bit. So that's those. What should I do here? I have the kind of red, purple, red, pink, purple, blue. I'm wondering if I should do yellow on here too, but perhaps a different yellow. Maybe mustard seed is always one of my favorite yellows, so we'll do that. And that'll kind of complete our rainbow of color. I'm keeping that color concentrated towards the bottom. And because this is the oxide ink, you can see it's kind of sitting on top of the foil. We'll fix that, no worries. I'm gonna grab my good old cleaning cloth again and just wipe that off the foil. And that shine will come right back. You just kind of got to give it some elbow grease. Should clean up my work surface too, so I'm not just putting it right back onto the foil. And then here's this one. And you can do your ink blending before or after you foil. In fact, most of the time I do it before I foil only because if I get a little heavy handed with my ink blending, that might change the color of the foil that I choose to use. But there we go. Still so pretty, still so shiny. Now I'm gonna add those on to the game pieces. But I think I'm gonna, let me spray this real quick because I don't wanna end up with any kind of ink on the white backer pieces because my son is very observant and he would notice that if there's smudges of ink on the back that it, that's the one that it matches with he's very smart too smart for his own good i'm keeping everything flat um i almost when i was making this put foam tape onto some of these pieces just because that's my go-to. I always use foam tape. And then I remembered, well, this is a game and they need to lay face down. So I went with just flat liquid adhesive, but it was very tempting and very hard to not use any kind of foam tape. I love this yellow. I'm glad he saved this one for me. I'm glad that he even knows that yellow is my favorite color and that cupcakes are my favorite. <laughs> And then we're gonna go rainbow. This is the only one that I did pattern paper on, but I think this would be a really fun game to put pattern paper on a bunch of the pieces. But we just went with standard cardstock colors. Just adding these together. This game comes together so quickly. And then I have the images that he already colored and then I did cut them out for him just so that they would have more consistent edges, but he is very good at cutting. So if you have little kids, this is a great project. I, he stamped the images and then he colored them in with Copics. And I think he did such a good job. I'm gonna add the rainbows here on his rainbow backgrounds. Love these little rainbows. They're so whimsical and cute. Oh, he even colored in the clouds. He did so good. He's just started kindergarten about a month ago. And he has always loved 
crafts. He has always loved to create with me ever since he was about two and he was old enough to kind of hold a marker and not crush it. He's been in my craft room with me. And um, over the summertime, we gave him his own craft cart. Just one of those like little, I think it's called a Raskog cart from our craft store. And he has his own stamps, his own stencils. He takes my foils, his tinsels, and he has his own stuff. And ever since he's been in school, his drawing and coloring has improved so much. And I'm so proud of how well he's doing. But that's it. These are the two additional pieces. Let's hold these up and get some shimmer and shine. This is the one color of the Laura Kelly foils that we didn't use together the other day. This is the sunshine yellow, my favorite color, on top of sweet swirls, one of my favorite backgrounds. And I do love this background too, this toner sheet. This is the Wacky Waves. And then he picked out the Deco Foil Rainbow Shattered Glass to use in the background here to match that rainbow. But that is going to complete our card game. Let's put these in rainbow order and I'll show them to you once more. This is the Red Wagon Foil. I'm trying to catch that light. Let's see, there we go. Red Wagon Foil on top of the Sweet Swirls toner sheets. This one here is the carrot orange. I love how this one turned out. It's so cute. And I love, he colored himself. He's so cute. And this is the sprinkled stripes. This one is the one that we just did. Sunshine yellow on top of those sweet swirls. And my favorite, a cupcake. And uh, let's see what's next. Green. This is me. <laughs> I've never worn lipstick in my life, but here I am, red lips and all. And this is the Parakeet Green Foil on top of the Baby Swiss Dots toner sheet. Here's a mailbox. Again, this is my parents' mailbox, he said. This is the uh, Dauntless Diamonds with the denim jeans blue foil. Here's my husband, his dad, very purple foil on top of the spotty dots toner sheet and then we have a cat and our imaginary purple dog with the wacky waves toner sheet and the flamingo pink foil this is my parents his grandparents house this is the magic wand silver with the uh sprinkled or not the, the chunky checks toner sheet and then this one the other one we did today this one is rainbow shattered glass foil with that wacky waves toner sheet. There's the complete set. I love this little memory game so much. It's one that he can take in the car with him. Um, it's one that he can take if we're going to sit in the doctor's office or something. It's such a great quiet game and he loved making these. He colored every single one of these images. I can't rave about him enough and I hope that for those of you who have little kids this is such a great way to get them involved in your crafting. Even if they're super little and they can't do foiling on their own, let them color in some cute little images. This is just, it, they're so cute. And I love that he did things that pertain to his life. Like he colored my parents' house. He colored our cat. He colored his dad. He colored my parents' mailbox. He colored me. He colored my favorite cupcake. He colored himself. And then he colored, we have an aquarium right near our house that we visit frequently. And so he colored little turtle and frogs. All those images are from, let me grab those stamp sets again. The Laura Kelly Me and My Peeps stamp set. And the Kindness on Purpose stamp set. These are great stamp sets for both adults and for kids. I've seen some amazing projects from the ThermoWeb team taking this little family and kind of making it Halloween style, but I think they're great line art images for kids to color. And then you pair them with the whole Laura Kelly toner sheet and foil lines, and you have so many different things you can make. So I hope you've enjoyed this little memory card game tutorial. They were really easy to make. It was a great way for me to spend some time with Jax again. Ever since he started school about a month ago, we haven't crafted together. And so when I pulled everything out after school one day and asked him if he wanted to sit and color with me for a while, he was really excited to craft with me again. So I hope that you are all inspired by this cute little game. 
and that you'll start crafting with your kids and make some memories together. That's it, you guys. That's all. It was a really simple, really easy tutorial today. So if nobody has any questions, I will sign off. And just remember that if you're watching this on replay, I will have all of the products that I used in today's video listed and linked in the video description below. It takes YouTube just a little while to render the video for it to free, oh my goodness, for it to pop up. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you again in a couple weeks. Bye.